think we were talking a bit about rhyme, rhythm, meter, some of the specifics in the poem. Mm -hmm. I think I'd like to talk a little bit more even about some of the anaphora that we see in the, the repetition of the beginning of the lines of the poem that we see in stanza three, even though yeah. we talked about it a bit. But you were saying something interesting about the rhythm. Yeah, well, I, I, I mean, I guess a couple of things. First of all, you look at a poem like this, and I, and I, I mean, even physically, you, you take a look at this and see that it's built on, uh, on stanzas of a fairly formulaic sort. Um, you've got the, the quatrains or the four, uh, not quatrains, but four-line stanzas at least, and it's pretty consistent. Uh, yeah, this four-line stanzas all the way through. It even has a, a kind of similarity of look to it. When you read it out loud, and we talked about this, I think, in one of the first um, videos, is that you, you need to hear the sound. And, and interestingly, it sounds initially like it, it rhymes. And you used the term sing-song. Certainly that with, uh, with Emily Dickinson. On closer examination, though, you know that, notice that it's not a consistent rhyme scheme. But, but there is yeah. still a constancy to its sound quality. And it seems that it's done more out of rhythm than out of rhyme. Yeah. And me and immortality, for example, two and four, fine. Right. And death, ourselves. Right. You know, haste and two, no. But you have a way and civility. It's almost a, it, Yeah. It's not as perfect as we expect it to be because no, not of the at perfect all. rhythm. Not at all, but it, 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 it hints enough at it that it feels it feels very constant. Um, so so there are enough hints with the, the rhyme and then the rhythm just stays the same. Again, in general, we, we talked about the iams in the, in the first stanza. may not be absolutely solid, but you tend to have first and third lines being slightly longer, second and fourth lines being slightly shorter. And it's and probably, it. It it's just, probably what keeps it us from flow. being a nursery rhyme. If, if, if we had this incredibly consistent rhythm, incredibly consistent rhyme, then we would have a nursery rhyme. I bet you're right. It would be lesser. Rose so, red, violets, blue, and then it just goes on. Yeah, yeah you, you, it would be, be much weaker. You said something interesting about the, the physical nature of the poem, the, the physicality of it, yeah. or the, the, and it, it makes me think of, I'm a bit of a materialist. <laughs> so I hear. <laughs> so, <laughs> and I, I mean, I really like looking at the physical structure of a poem and the way it's presented on the page, or even the text, and the fact that this is not only something that we read, but something that's presented on the page. I mean, it is a it is a physical construct, and it's particularly interesting with Emily Dickinson because we have all of these dashes in here. In this poem, not many. There are dashes at the end of a line, but I think it's it's worth noting that uh, in stanza one, two, three, four, five. Well, in most of the stanzas, we have. In stanza four, my tippet, dash, only tall, dash. And then in stanza five, the roof was scarcely visible, dash, the, corn, the, the cornice, dash, mm -hmm. uh, in the ground. That Emily Dickinson, when she wrote her poems, she included some of these dashes, but she also included large amounts of space that were just taken out when they mm -hmm. published the poem. So you'd have this, this line with irregular space. Either, either replaced with a dash by the publisher or just pushed together by the publisher. They, the, the publisher would decide, well, there's nothing there, there's no dash, there's no comma, so we'll push the words together. Or mm -hmm. there's a space that we can't account for, so we'll put a dash into it. Um, and I just like to think about how she wanted us to look at a poem right. and how she wanted the spaces in that poem. So I think ties into some of that irregularity you find between yeah. meter and rhyme, that this isn't meant to be a perfect yeah. poem or be a perfect sound. Or probably, I mean, and the capitalization probably fits in with that, too. I mean, you, I, you know, we're, we're jumping ahead a little bit. We haven't talked about um, what you see in Emily Dickinson's poetry, some of her background, a strong religious background, so there's a hymnal quality to a lot of the sounds that, that or the, the poems that remind us of the the church songs, the capitalization sometimes gets weird, especially when it's the capital H, he, and you know, yeah. is that God, is that, or right. imagination, etc. But probably like the spaces, it, it is, it's visual. It just, it comes up periodically. You don't know whether it's, I guess it's intentional, mm -hmm. but it doesn't always have the, the kind of uh, 
wholesale significance that we like to attribute it to. It's, it, it's, it, it does seem to be just, it, just something that looks in. It's, it's kind of, changes. I mean, Emily Dickinson is, is falling into poetic constructs and idealistic constructs that we expect her to fall into in the, in the early 19th century, but then she's breaking them at the same time. I mean, you mentioned the, the he death. Is it, mm -hmm. is it God? Is it death personified mm -hmm. as a capital H, he, something uh, lordly and, and to be praised? Uh, Dad, how long is this going to take? <laughs> or is it random <laughs> capital H? longer. Good. Go, go by <laughs> but, here's a religious comment about Dickinson. Four people in her family, a couple of sisters of dad, or a sister, a brother, dad, they all converted. They all, like, uh, Amherst Mass, where she was living, they went through a, one of those revitalizations. What do they call it? A revival. A Christian revival. Really? Yeah. And... All th everybody in her family did it, really? except for Emily. She refused. <laughs> and, Stop it, sweetie! Come on, come on. Let us have this. Oh. Okay, okay. got a lot of editing to do. <laughs> she even talked about, and, and this is again, this is from that video I watched. But she even talked about how really? she wrote to friends <laughs> about their religious conviction. Yeah, and she said. Tell me how it feels, because I just don't feel it. So it's, there's this weird thing where she was raised incredibly religious. Right, right. Her parents and and siblings went even further in an extreme for religious beliefs, and she backed off. So she's got that complete background of understanding and belief. And yet, Okay, John, could you pause it, John? No.